Okay guys, I'm back with another video for you today and today I'm focusing on the note of Osmanthus. Now several months ago I did a video on three Osmanthus focused fragrances that launched around the same time. Those were Atelier Cologne's Love Osmanthus, Maison Crivelli's Osmanthus Kodoshan, this one right here, and then finally Etoile Filante from Louis Vuitton. So today in this video I've got 15 total Osmanthus fragrances and I'm ranking them from my least favorite to the most favorite and I'm gonna let you know what they are coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Yes, Osmanthus as a note. What does it smell like? It's a note that actually for me smells fruity, floral, and sometimes it can also smell leathery and green as well. So these are things that you can create with this particular note, which I find to be a very, very pleasant note. Sometimes for me though, Osmanthus can smell odd, fruity, odd, leathery, and the together sometimes it might be a little off-putting, but the majority of the time it smells fantastic. And I've got 15 fragrances here that focus on Osmanthus, some more than others, some are all about Osmanthus, some feature Osmanthus, but some of the ones that are like uh, lightly in there as a supporting note are amazing, amazing fragrances. But I have those plus all the ones that featured fully all in this list today. And I've got a total of 15 and I'm ranking the list as I said, but before I get to the fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So let me know if you know this note of Osmanthus. Are you a fan of it? So Osmanthus is a flower from a tree and also it's used as a tea. You can boil it and drink it according to my research. But as I said, the, the flowers, it's a fruity floral kind of a smell and then the fruits or the fruitiness from the flower smells of apricots, could smells of peaches, stone fruit, you know, nectarines and things like that. But there is a little bit of a leathery undertone created with this as well. And then it's green, it has a greenish quality as well. So all these things can come up in uh, Osmanthus. And sometimes I like it as its own note. It, it smells great. It can be fresh, very, very fresh and fruity. Sometimes it could be mixed in with kind of ambery fragrances, but sometimes you can add it to like fragrances that feature tobacco to add a little fruitiness to it, which is amazing. There's a fragrances like that here. There's a fragrance focusing on iris that has this Osmanthus note in it. And it has this very unique, uh, you know, slightly leathery, fruity uh, note to the iris. And of course there's a tobacco with vanilla that has some fruitiness with this Osmanthus. So it's an amazing note on its own, supporting, does magic. But you know what? We're going to start off with one that's very, very light, going to the house of Joe Malone. This is Osmanthus Blossom Cologne right here. So this is one of the lightest of uh, light fragrances. Obviously we know Jo Malone does some of the lightest fragrances because they are Eau de Cologne fragrances. And with this one, it does say Osmanthus Blossom. Obviously they're the blossoms from the Osmanthus tree. They're flowers. So you experience it very kind of fresh extremely fresh actually and there's the light fruitiness under there i get mostly apricots with this one but you know what it also features notes of pettigran and cashmere wood and cashmere wood is a, a synthetic note that they add to create this kind of like an ambery woody musky experience so in the end you're getting a very very fresh very fresh and green Osmanthus uh, experience here with this particular fragrance. Osmanthus Blossom Cologne from Jo Malone. Let me know if you're a fan of this one uh, and if you've tried it, uh, I'd like to find out. But I think it's a good start at number 15 because it's the freshest and it's very, very easy to wear. Of course, it's an eau de cologne and it won't, you know, uh, you know, get in the way of people if they're, you know, sensitive to fragrances. So that's at number 15. We're going to a more heavier fragrance now to the House of Mugler with their Less Exceptions collection. And this is Woodissime or Woodissime. Uh, I think it's Woodissime or Woodissime. It's a kind of a complicated name. But with this one, it's Osmanthus with fruits and oud. 
So it's very, very woody, and then there's leathery undertones here because they've used it to, you know, accentuate some leathery touches under there with th this note. But along the way with the oud fruits and osmanthus, you also have sandalwood, cedar, patchouli, and vetiver. This is completely so different than any other fragrances that Mugler has done, although they've done fruity fragrances. But this focuses on lots of woods and oud. The oud is really, really, you know, prominent, and it is a great contrast to the fruits with the osmanthus. Osmanthus, again, is a note that smells fruity floral, altogether lightly leathery, green as well. So you have that here with fruits and sandalwood, a little patchouli and vetiver. So that's what I'm getting with this one. It's ranked low. Um, I have favorites in this collection. This is not one of my all-time favorites, but if you're looking for a great oody, woody, fruity fragrance, lightly leathery, do check out Woodissime or Woodissime from the House of Mugler in their Less Exceptions collection. The next one I'm talking about is from the House of Louis Vuitton. It is Etoile Filante. This is mostly about osmanthus, magnolia, and jasmine. So osmanthus flowers go apricot, peachy, uh, nectarini. So it's got that kind of fruity floral touch here. It's very, very fresh with this one. This collection is fresh uh, from uh, Louis Vuitton. But then they've thrown in the magnolia and jasmine as well. And I think uh, the magnolia, which it has lightly lemony, lemony undertones, and jasmine, of course, is a very, very pungent flower. So the, the connection of those three flowers together makes for a great fragrance. I also get a little bit of like a tea-like effect here, and a little bit of a muskiness under there. There is a watery thing running throughout the fragrance as well, um, and it smells great. It smells like a um, peach soda, can I say that? Like peach fizz or apricot fizz, apricot soda, something like that. So it's good, but I've ranked it low. It's not one of my all-time favorites uh, from the Louis Vuitton fragrances collection. So Etoile Filante at number 13. So the next one is Maison Crivelli's Osmanth Kodoshan. So this one to me, uh, it's called Osmanth Kodoshan, and I feel like the Osmanthus is not the star. Uh, they, they have star anise here, Sichuan pepper, black tea, patchouli, tobacco, cystus labdanum, and osmanthus. And I feel like other notes are more prominent from, for me, the osmanthus doesn't stand out. Plus, the other thing is, they're actually, when they're, make, they're using the osmanthus in here, they're not accentuating the fruitiness, they're accentuating less fruits, and I, th I feel like the leather is coming out more. So I kind of wanted to enjoy the, the fruitiness from the osmanthus. Uh, unfortunately, it gets a little more leathery rather than fruity. It's almost like a fruit leather, but more leather than fruit. I don't know if you guys have ever eaten fruit leather kind of tasty. It's usually with apricots. It's from the Middle East, but um, that's the experience I'm getting. But, but this I'm talking about more like real leather ra rather than fruit leather. I'm just using the fruit leather as an analogy. Still a great scent because the Sichuan pepper has lightly lemony touches and the anise is always great. I love anise. It kind of has a greenish touch. I just wanted no, that there's a black uh, black tea in here as well that also is pretty prominent, but I just wanted a little more osmanthus fruitiness, which uh, unfortunately is not there, but still a great scent. At number 12, it's a Maison Crivelli Osmanth Kodoshan. At number 11, it's uh, Love Osmanthus from the house of Atelier Cologne. This is a fresh fragrance. Unfortunately, it's very, very light, sadly, um, so it is kind of uh, ranked low. It, it doesn't wear very intense. This is a lot more lighter, the Eau de Cologne, but I just wish this was uh, wearing a little heavier. But you know what? I think the freshness would go on because it is definitely really, really fresh, extremely fresh, and um, the, the actual... Um, Osmanthus here is lots of fruitiness, so there's lots of apricot, uh, apricotty touches in here. So it's Italian lemon, Chinese osmanthus, American cedar is what the notes are, uh, and you do experience it. I do get some light floral touches under there as well. Perhaps there's some very, very light, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, some uh, jasmine or something like that in there as well. Not very prominent, but the overall combination is very great. And if you're kind of tired of like citruses, because this house does great, great citruses, and you want a kind of a change of pace, you want like this fruitiness, apricots is calling your name or something, and you'd go for 
something like this and you can liberally spray this stuff a lot and it's not going to overwhelm anybody including yourself because it really does smell fresh kind of apricotty floral and uh, you know lightly woody when it's drying down so love osmanthus from the house of atelier cologne uh, definitely check that out and again this is definitely a fruity note but we're talking about the stone fruit mostly apricots but peaches and nectarines as well and of course it also kind of can get leathery and of course a little green as well that's what osmanthus is all about all right up next we're going to the house of paris monte carlo this is absolute osmanthus so, or absolutely osmanth is what it is. And it is, once again, this is a, a heavier ambery osmanthus experience. So in the end, you're using tolu balsam with labdanum. Labdanum creates our amber accord. So you have those kind of heavy syrupy molasses -y notes in contrast with the osmanthus. So you've got kind of like more of like a fruit paste kind of a experience with the osmanthus uh, note in here and lightly leathery as well so it's got loads of osmanthus tolu balsam labdanum sandalwood vanilla and jasmine you know what i get lots of jasmine in here as well and i feel like the jasmine does complement osmanthus for some reason they kind of remind me of like distant relatives who can kind of join together to create a great a cohesive kind of a smell. So there is that going in here as well. But in the end, it's very ambery and balsamic, especially with the labdanum and tolu balsam in here. A great change of pace. This is completely opposite of uh, something like this where it's over the top fresh here it's over the top heavy so you gotta like this fruity ambery touch with uh, Monte, uh, Paris Monte Carlo's Absolute Osmanth uh, at number 10. So up next we're going to the house of Alexander McQueen and this is Sacred Osmanthus now we're going to a T direction and I as I was saying earlier I hope I said it there osmanthus can be drank as a tea it's boiled the flowers are boiled and drank as a tea and I believe this is a, a custom in China from what I've read I've never tasted it myself but here with uh, Alexander McQueen's sacred osmanthus we're going to a T direction with osmanthus so this one uh, the T here is a lot more prominent than the osmanthus plus you have less so basically they're highlighting everything about the osmanthus because you can drink it as a tea it can go uh, leathery because osmanthus does have leathery undertones and then of course it's got the apricotty stone fruit peach nectarine kind of touch in here as well for me this one is more tea and it doesn't get ultra fruity and definitely has the leathery touches but a unique smell if you like a kind of a fruity leathery tea fragrance experience I think this one definitely uh, is one for you to try and sadly this Alexander McQueen you know upper end collection of fragrances is not very hyped not a lot of people talk about it and it is targeted feminine but it's not necessarily over the top feminine for me especially since it's tea osmanthus and leather go check it out if you like the idea Alexander McQueen's Sacred Osmanthus at number nine. So this next one is pretty popular, I think, with uh, folks who like Bikillion. And this is Good Girl Gone Bad Extreme. I only have the extreme version of this fragrance. And this is a milky lactonic Osmanthus experience. So you've got this fruity, apricotty, slightly leathery thing happening with lactonic milk thrown in there as well. Very, very interesting creamy fruity at the same time i think it's popular plus it, it i think this particular fragrance even though it's not loud it has a very very musky sexy trail as well that i've smelled off of people and it really does smell fantastic so it's osmanthus tuberose milk jasmine narcissus amber cedar rose so in the end it does get ambery and woody in the base but up top you've got this milkiness and milk fruit kind of a thing happening with musk and interesting uh, creation that um, Alberto Maria's has created. I think it's a great scent. It smells fantastic. And as I said, it has a great trail. It has the light fruitiness from the osmanthus. A little leathery as well. Very, very lightly leathery. But if you like fruit milk, <laughs> uh, almost reminds me of a, as a kid with Fruit Loops kind of soaking in milk idea. Uh, and then drinking that milk with the fruitiness kind of a thing. That's what I'm thinking here. But that doesn't smell like that. Don't worry. But anyway, if you like that idea of milk fruit, you know, stone fruit apricots and things like that, definitely try Good Girl Gone Bad. And again, this is the extreme version because that's the only one I have. It smells great. 
I really do like it. And that's at number eight. So the next fragrance, I'm going to a house that's not that hyped and I don't know what's going on with this house. I think they only have four or maybe five fragrances total. They used to sell them at Barney's but no longer. This is La Parfumerie Moderne Belle's Reeves. This is the fragrance right here. And this particular fragrance is that fragrance I was saying earlier that has iris with osmanthus. It's iris powdery, powdery, iris always goes powdery with stone fruit osmanthus fruitiness. Very, very unique contrast that smells really, really fantastic. This in addition to the iris and osmanthus also has myrrh, incense, vetiver, jasmine, and cedar. And the combination is really, really great. It's a great perfumer created this. Uh, it's Marc Antoine Corticchiato, I think that's his name. Uh, and he's got, he, his fragrances are pretty great. He has his own brand called Parfum the Empire, and he does the fragrances here. But I just really love that powdery iris with the fruity osmanthus com combination. I think it marries very beautifully together, and I like that fruity, powdery, you know, lightly leathery with apricotty, uh, unique touches and then of course some resinous myrrh experience in here with the incense and vetiver as well beautiful fragrance and it's interesting the jasmine does appear here as well but i think the jasmine is not as strong but the iris is really really sexy against the osmanthus so that's la parfumerie moderne bells reeves check it out if you don't know it all right next up going to the house of bentley and yes bentley has a unisex collection of uh, upper end collection of fragrances and they have an osmanthus focused fragrance called radiant osmanthus this one right here uh, the purple color is kind of throwing me off because when i think of osmanthus i think of this color this kind of yellowish color because i think of the fruit in this color uh, and also this color right here kind of like a golden fruit color the the, the purple is kind of throwing me off but in the end it's a very very fresh uh, woody, uh, fruity, uh, floral fragrance, focusing on lots of os osmanthus with lemons as well. So it has lots of citruses, mandarin comes up, and then it kind of sells to like a cedar amber uh, experience. But along the way, you're experiencing some neroli, jasmine, peach, and musk as well. So it's a fruity, fruity experience, lightly leathery from the osmanthus, but mostly fruity, peachy, apricotty, lots of citruses, and of course, settles to that amber woods experience in the base. But a beautiful fragrance. I really like this one. Uh, it doesn't smell... Um, no, I, I should say it does kind of have a, a lightly sour experience because uh, of the, uh, you know, peachiness that's in here, or the apricotiness that's in here from the osmanthus but it's actually great uh, fragrance to wear you can wear this liberally spray it on and it's fresh refreshing but definitely has the, the depth of the the amber and cedar in the base so you might you know take it easy with the uh, over spraying it's it's a uh, this is actually right here um, a lot lighter, so liberally you can spray that one. Just this one be a little more careful because it does have the amber and cedar in the base. But a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. It's Radiant Osmanthus from the House of Bentley. Now this next one is so, so good. Uh, I don't speak a lot about this house. I did a video a long time ago about three of their fragrances, but I keep coming back to this particular fragrance and I feel like this is probably one of the better ones from this house. This is Exaltatum fragrances and it's Osmanthus Noble. This is an extremely fruity, over the top fruity version of osmanthus but leathery as well because it does get leathery suede soft buttery leather suede like but it's so beautiful and it's intensely fruity like they've taken all the fruit parts out of the osmanthus flower and just giving us the fruits you know i think the osmanthus does go leathery but there is a suede note in here the notes are osmanthus suede sandalwood tobacco clary sage musk oak moss Ilang Ilang vetiver. Lots of stuff going on here, but if you like it overly fruity, more fruits like stone fruit, you know, apricot, peaches, nectarines, things like that, and how those smell intense, that's what they've done here extremely well. And I think this is a great, great scent. Really, really wonderful. You can totally pick up the kind of like lightly tart, sweet, uh, 
smell of apricots in here, almost like a fruit roll-up kind of a smell, because you can smell the you know tartness and the fruitiness in there. That's in here, and the fruit leather idea also comes to mind. If you are Middle Eastern, you're kind of familiar with that apricot fruit leather that's kind of like the, in, a, in a sheet and kind of rolled up and you can pick pieces off of it and eat it. That's kind of what this reminds me of. It's really, really a delicious fragrance, heavy on the osmanthus. Osmanthus is the star here and it's full on in your face osmanthus. So exaltatum, Osmanthus Noble. Now this next one I ordered all the way from Europe because I can't find it here in the States. Going to the house of Molinard, this is Osmanthus. This is a, a new fragrance, new wish fragrance because it's not new now. It, I think it came out last year. But uh, this one is, again, over the top fruitiness with lots of Osmanthus. Apricots, Mandarin Orange, White Musk, Tuberose, Jasmine, Bergamot, Pink Pepper. So in the end, it's a fresh experience, but the apricot seems a little more ripe here. It's a little more sweeter. So you're experiencing that with the, the osmanthus plus the apricots note in here. And you know, you've got light leathery undertones and a little greenish touches as well, but lots of citruses with the mandarin orange. It does get musky as well, but it's a clean, clean musk and some light spices and floral touches. It's a great scent. I think this would have been a great addition to the other, the purple collection, the Eau de Parfum collection from um, the Molinard house that has fig and things like that. So if you like that collection, I think this is definitely one for you to try. I really do think the Osmanthus that they've done here is really, really amazing to wear. It's not overly heavy. It's also not a wimp, but a great fruity floral experience with musk under there. So Molinard's Osmanthus at number four. So this next one is probably one of the best fragrances from this house that I'm going to speak to you about now. At number three, it's Fig Tea from the house of Parfums de Nicolai. And this is, even though called Fig Tea, it focuses on Osmanthus and it's really, really fruity. Really, really delicious fragrance with Osmanthus and figs. So you have the fig fruit, you have the Osmanthus note, which is kind of apricotty, peachy, nectarine and lightly leathery, but you also have mate, artemisia, jasmine, coriander, guyac wood with an ambery dry down. It has green touches and it also has fruity touches, has lots of floral touches as well, but it wears beautifully and it's a really cozy experience. There is a little bit of a creamy undertone here with this, but the fruits are just really, really pumping with the osmanthus and uh, fig note in here. It's a great, great scent. Very, very unique fig tea. There's no tea here, but I love the name and it makes sense. We're kind of, well, osmanthus, as I said, has the, you know, people drink it as a tea. So it makes sense that they would call this a fig tea because it has the fig note plus the osmanthus. So that's Parfums de Nicolai fig tea at number three, a great, great scent. So at number two, it might throw people off, but this fragrance does feature Osmanthus. This is Parfums de Marley's Herod. Absolute love. It's at number two and not number one because the Osmanthus is not as strong as I want it to be for an Os Osmanthus fragrance. But in the end, it's lots of Osmanthus. Not as much as like the cinnamon, the vanilla, and tobacco in here. But you have those notes and then you have this fruitiness that comes in from the Osmanthus. And that's what does it for me, I think, with this fragrance. The cinnamon, vanilla, tobacco together with the Osmanthus is a match made in heaven. It's my one of my favorite tobacco tobacco fragrances and also my favorite um, Parfums de Marley to this day uh, came out way long time ago and I'm still really in love with the way this smells. But in addition to the four notes I've mentioned, you also have some labdanum, vetiver, incense, and black pepper note in here as well. A great, great fragrance. I think, as I said, if the Osmanthus' fruitiness is not here, I think this fragrance would not have really worked. That Osmanthus adds this magic fruity touch in here for a tobacco fragrance. And it makes sense. You need some fruits for a tobacco fragrance and it's doing some magic tricks here for Herod. So the Herod is at number two, my number two favorite Osmanthus fragrance. And my number one is the Osmanthus fragrance of them all. I think this is one of the best Osmanthus fragrances ever uh, created. Uh, I'm not gonna say yet, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. It wears not heavy, it wears fresh, but it has a uh, substance, it has some depth, 
but it's a very classy, very elegant fragrance. It's not over the top. It's not overly ambery. It's not a wimp. It's not like ultra fresh. Just the perfect, perfect Osmanthus fragrance. This is Ormond Jane's Osmanthus. Amazing stuff. Created by Gaze Shone, who does the eccentric molecules fragrances. And he's done such an am amazing job here. Oh my God, it is so good. There's green touches here. There's floral touches here. Lightly leathery touches here. Loads of Osmanthus, pomelo, water lily, jasmine sandback, vetiver, artemisia, musk. And there's that jasmine again. I think jasmine and Osmanthus are perfect uh, relatives or distant relatives I should say great flowers that worked well together and they're doing magic together here it's just this an amazing fragrance you know I I'm, I'm a lover of really intense fragrances and Ormond Jane House is not that absolutely not but the fragrances that they have here are just amazing classy very elegant if you want nothing over the top but refined fabulously amazing fragrances. I think Ormond Jane is a great house. It's very, very elegant and classy. Like they're just perfect fragrances. Uh, I just think of dress up, dressy, dressy fragrances with this house. I mean, I featured Ombre Royal the other day in my Ambroxan fragrances video. Once again, it's a great fragrance. And then this Osmanthus is also an amazing, amazing fragrance from Ormond Jane. So Ormond Jane Osmanthus is my number one pick for my number one Osmanthus fragrance. Anyway guys, do you know Osmanthus as a note? Do you enjoy those uh, fragrances with Osmanthus or is this something new you learned today? Let me know, put some comments down so I can find out. If you have a favorite Osmanthus fragrance that I did not speak about today, of course I can't own everything. That's 15 Osmanthus fragrances, there's a lot. But I'm always looking for more. If you have a favorite, put a comment down so I can find out what it is so I can check into it for a later top 20 perhaps. But either way, this is my top 15 Osmanthus fragrances video. Let me know what you think about these fragrances. Let me know how you would rank this list. Let me know new or other Osmanthus fragrances so I can look into them. I appreciate you tuning in. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. <music>